On this week's Sports Japan, we feature Nihon Eiho, classical Japanese swimming. With a history of more than 400 years, we delve into its roots and introduce some of the unique strokes that have been passed down to this day. We see how Nihon Eiho swimmers of all generations use a range of intricate skills to become one with the water. And in front runners, we meet a 70-year-old surfer dude who has dreams of riding the big waves. Hello everybody, I'm Wiyako Kisa and you're watching Sports Japan. So as always, we've got some great stuff in store for you from the exciting world of Japanese sports. Let's welcome today's guest, Miyako Tanaka Ube, bronze medalist in the synchronized swimming duet at the Seoul Olympics. And Miyako, you now work as a performance enhancement consultant for athletes. Welcome Miyako. Thank you. So you'll be Pleased to hear that today's show is all about water sports and we're going to start by taking a look at the classical swimming which is called Nihon Eho in Japanese. Right. Ayoko, I don't think you have ever seen Nihon Eho so often in public, right? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> but uh, Nihon Eho, I actually did that sport when I was 10 years old. You did? Before starting synchronized swimming Ooh. and actually my first instructor of synchronized swimming mm -hmm. was uh, also an instructor of Nihon Eho. Oh wow! Because uh, underwater, the many many techniques mm -hmm. are really related into uh, synchronized swimming as well. Right, so if we take a look at this chart, we can see that the Japan Swimming Federation uh, oversees six disciplines, swimming, water polo, diving, synchronized swimming, open water swimming, and Nihon Eho which is not one of the disciplines recognized by the International Swimming Federation. So this is right. only in Japan, right? Exactly, because International Swimming Federation has only five events. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is a really unique sport in Japan. So let's take a look at the roots of Nihon Eho and some of the unique strokes that have been passed down to the present day. A man dressed in samurai armor is about to take on a challenge which most people don't usually associate with warriors. He lowers himself into a swimming pool and starts to swim. Amazing considering his armor and helmet weigh more than 20 kilograms. This is Nihon Eiho or classical Japanese swimming. Some techniques wearing full armor, such as this stroke called Kachu Gozen Oyogi, have been passed down for more than 300 years. It felt very different to what I'm used to. The armor is really heavy, but I'm delighted I could swim. The origins of Nihon Eho lie in Suijutsu, combative swimming techniques developed for use in battle. Many of these traditional strokes are still practiced and kept alive today. This technique is called the Inatobi. Ina is Japanese for a type of mullet, while Tobi means to fly. Both arms are snapped backwards to propel the upper body out of the water. Inatobi was created for looking into the distance while swimming and helping warriors board boats. This technique, known as Tachi Oyogi, is one of the basic skills of Nihon Eiho. Similar to Western methods for treading water, it's used to stay stationary for an extended period. Tachi Oyogi uses little energy and keeps the upper body stable. Skilled swimmers can even fire a gun, fight with swords, or use a bow and arrow while still in the water. The samurai had very good reason for mastering such remarkable skills. A Nihon Eho expert gave us some insights into why they were so necessary. During the Warring States period, when various different samurai clans were formed, it would have been impossible to defeat rival clans or pirates without advanced swimming techniques. 
Samurai clans based by rivers or near the ocean had a particular need for such combative swimming skills. During the Warring States period, battles on the water frequently occurred. Samurai had to think about how they'd survive if they were thrown into the water with their armor on. This gave birth to suijutsu, combative swimming that was developed to cover a number of possible situations. After realizing it could make the difference between life and death, more and more warriors began adopting suijutsu. Later on, during times of peace, suijutsu became an art form, and warriors would compete before their master to display the beauty and elegance of their skills. Suijutsu eventually developed into Nihong Eiho, the classical techniques that are still practiced to this day. There are currently 13 schools of Nihon Eho and 132 recognized competition techniques. This wide range of different schools is one of Nihon Eho's defining characteristics. It results from the development of separate swimming techniques within different warrior groups and clans. Japan is an island nation surrounded by ocean with an abundance of rivers and lakes. Familiarity with the water has long been a part of the culture. Miyako, good old days back in Seoul, right? <laughs> Thank you for finding that picture. <laughs> I loved wow. your smile. Look at you. When I was, that was like, a, I was 21 years old. Okay. Wow, she looks pretty, right? <laughs> you do. You still do. <laughs> Great. <laughs> right. Yeah. So of course, the synchronized swimming and Nihon Eho are really correlated. Mm -hmm. And uh, but actually, when I was 10 years old, I was doing uh, that sport. But uh, one of the school of Nihon Eho, it's uh -huh. called Sui Fudu Otaha. Okay. That's the school I was belonging to. Mm -hmm. And that historically, it's just really a long, long history. It's passed um, 400, more than 400 years that Sui Fudu Otaha wow. has been uh, doing. So you did the calligraphy in water and you you can probably live in water, Miyako. Oh <laughs> yes, of course, I can even eat something uh, on, on the water. Movie. Yes, standing there, yeah, right. water. Yes. So can you tell me more about the links between Nihon Eho and synchronized swimming? Yep. I think I should explain with um, um, some of the similar techniques okay. on the water. You know, it's one of them is um, called uh, Uki Oyogi. Okay. Direct translation is floating techniques. You know, to float your body, you are sculling your arms and uh, uh, pushing your legs, legs like this. That is in synchronous swimming called egg beater. Ooh, you know, it, it was looks the same. The same. Right? So uh, that was really related to synchronous swimming. And also the second one I would like to explain is kakiwake. Okay. It's a sculling techniques, but um, sculling and pull the body up the water. And that's also in syn synchronized swimming. The technique is called boost. Ooh, I do see this often. Right, right. And it, that is really powerful movement. And uh, you can express yourself with arm performances with uh, pushing the uh, legs so hard mm. like this. Wow. The third one is Huta Enoshi in Nihon Eho. Okay. Yep. This is like a double sideways kicking. Yep. Like underwater, you can see kicking like yes. this two times. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, used by especially Japanese synchronous swimmers 
because we know from Nihon Eho, mm -hmm. and uh, normally American swimmers are doing only sideways kicking. Is that it's, different? Yeah, it's like a sideways kicking. It's only doing like this, so that the same speed. Okay. No variety of the speed. Oh. But when you do uh, Nihon Eho way, you bend your knees and push, Ooh. so that you stop mm. and boom, yeah, quickly you can go fast. So that that's kind of like a variety of the performance you can do in synchronized oh, swimming. Wonderful. So you could really say that Nihon Eho is at the root of um, synchronized mm. swimming. I really wanted to say that. But uh, as a sport, synchronous swimming is coming from what's coming from a Western world. Western world. So a okay. um, little bit of the history of synchronous swimming. You know, origin of synchronous swimming was started in 1892. Okay. It was called stunt swimming in the UK. Mm -hmm. And after that, well, see, the time passed, and then Canada and United States started uh, putting the water ballet into the sport. Okay. Then uh, everything was uh, decided, like all rules are decided as a right. sport in 1941. And it came to Japan in 1954? Right. So that the first time we saw synchronous swimming was that time. But uh, before that, as a Japanese, already we knew how to move the unique uh, movements underwater from uh, Nihon Eho. Nihon Eho. Mm. Wow, that is very interesting to hear. Yep. So let's continue our feature on Nihon Eho and take a look at the annual nationwide competition. In Nihon Eho competitions, swimmers don't wear armor. This race could be any other swimming event. But once things get going, it's anything but ordinary. The swimmers speed through the pool using an unusual stroke. At first glance, it looks like the front crawl. But when we look closer, we can see that only one arm leaves the water. From underwater, we can see that the kicking motion used is also very different to the crawl. Both legs are moved apart before being brought together in a scissors motion. This is the sideways swimming race, the only event in Nihon Eho that is actually raced against the clock. In contrast, the other events are held in an atmosphere of reverential quiet. The aim of these events, known as Eho Kyogi, is to demonstrate the strength and beauty of the stroke. The swimming styles are divided into three groups, depending on the angle of the body in the water. The categories are flat, sideways, and standing. The flat strokes, referred to as heitai in Japanese, are swum with the chest flat to the water. Sideways strokes are referred to as otai. With otai, the angle of the torso must be held somewhere between 45 and 90 degrees. The nittai category consists of standing strokes. With these, the torso has to be held as vertically as possible. In Nihon Eho, there are a total of 132 different types of stroke. The seven judges.